Hey, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. Today I'm going to talk about mixing using an analog mixing console. I made a couple of videos not too long ago, one about mixing console and DOS setup for analog mixing, which is also known as mixing out of the box, and another one called Turn Your DAW Into a Tape Machine, which explores the concept of using your DAW like it's a tape machine. So make sure to check out those two videos, especially the analog mixing console and DAW setup video, which contains a little bit more about the DAW side of using an analog mixing console to mix. In this video, I'm going to cover the functions and features of the analog mixing console and how they can be useful to you when you're mixing through an analog console. I'll also provide a couple of example comparisons towards the end of the video between in-the-box mixes and mixes that I've done on two different consoles that I have here in the studio. As an example, here is the back of the Soundtracks Topaz recording console. You can see that each of the channels has a selection of inputs and outputs. You have a mic input, a line input, the insert, the monitor or tape input, and the tape output. Now this is a recording console, so you have the tape input. If you've got a recording console, this is where you would want to connect the analog outputs from your audio interface to the individual channels so that you can mix those through the console rather than in the box. If you have a smaller mixer that doesn't have any kind of tape inputs, you can also use the line inputs to connect the outputs of your audio interface to in order to mix through the analog console. This is the back panel of the master section of the Soundtracks Topaz recording console. You can see here at the top left, we've got the main left right outputs. These main left and right outputs are what you would want to connect back to two input channels on your audio interface in order to record the mix that you're mixing on the analog console back into the DAW for your mix down. We've got auxiliary outputs here that are useful for things like send effects. We've got effects returns, which are basically just additional line inputs to the console. So you can connect any kind of stereo sources to these. These are actually stereo TRS jacks on this console. Your console may have two jacks or even RCA cables. Different kinds of connections are common on consoles. You also have control room outputs that would connect to studio monitors and some additional like two track inputs and things for referencing or playing any other kind of device, a CD player or an iPod or something, you could play through this. You've also got studio outs. It's got a whole complement of connections. But the main things that you're concerned about when you're mixing through a console is these main outs, possibly the main inserts, the subgroups, and the aux sends. This is the front panel of the Soundtracks Topaz recording console. If I've connected my outputs of my audio interface to the tape returns on this console, then I need to hit this flip switch at the top of the channels in order to bring the tape returns down through the main channel. Otherwise, the tape returns appear on these small monitor controls, which also on this console have their own dedicated pan, solo, and mute controls. That's more for tracking though. I'm going to make an additional video on tracking with an analog console in the near future, so make sure to check back on the channel for that. Today we're talking about mixing, so once you've got your audio interface outputs connected to either a line input or a tape input on your console and you have either the flip switch or the line switch pressed on the console to bring that signal down through the main channel of the console, there are several things you can do with it. Of course you've got onboard EQ, this console has a bypass switch for the EQ or an EQ on and off switch. You've got inserts. I showed that connection on the back panel of this console. If you don't have a patch bay, you just need an insert cable, a Y cable that goes from a TRS quarter inch to two TS quarter inch jacks on the other end to connect to the input and output of your processor that you want on the insert. This is an insert cable. This one's a Sweetwater insert cable. So you've got the TRS end here, and then you've got two ends, tip and ring, that would go to your outboard processor. So this would go to the insert and this to the input of the processor, this to the output. Some consoles have tip hot, some have ring hot. I think the Topaz is backwards from some, so I'm not gonna tell you that. I will tell you if you plug these in backwards and the processor doesn't function properly, it's not gonna hurt anything. 
just switch them and then the processor should work. Not a real big deal there. You can also get insert snakes. A patch bay is a really good thing to have when you're mixing with an analog console. You can put together a patch bay using insert snakes, which is just multiple copies of the same setup here on this cable. And you can connect that to multiple channels and to a patch bay where you don't have to climb behind your console to connect these things. But when you're just getting started out, just have a few pieces of outboard gear. You can just get behind the console and connect it until you're ready to move up and get a patch bay or buy a console with a built-in patch bay like the Soundcraft Sapphire that I have here. An insert only affects the signal on that individual channel and doesn't affect any of the other signals on any of the other channels. So if you want to use the same effect on multiple things, the best way to do that is to use an auxiliary send. An auxiliary send can be thought of as taking a split of whatever signal is on that channel and sending that signal somewhere else to be used. There are pre-fader and post-fader auxiliary sends. Some are switchable between the two types. Pre-fader aux sends are generally used for things like headphone mixes or anything where you don't want that signal level to vary, while a post-fader aux send is usually used for effects. That way, when you turn off the sound source, the effect send is also turned off so that you don't have a ghost reverb with the dry signal missing. Many times an analog console will also have subgroups. The Soundtracks Topaz has eight subgroups. These subgroups can be useful for grouping things so that you can control multiple signals with less faders. They can also be used for such things as parallel compression. I made an entire video on how to do parallel compression with the Soundtracks Topaz recording console, so I'll put a link to that video in the video description and at the end of this video so you can check out how to do parallel compression with the subgroup. An analog console will usually have inserts on the master bus as well so that you can use an analog compressor to do some master bus compression really easily with an analog console. Simply by connecting some type of a stereo compressor, you usually want that to be linked, and you connect that to the inserts of the master bus on the console to provide a little bit of bus compression for your overall mix output on your analog console. Now once your signals are coming down through the channels to these faders on the channels, you have to send that somewhere else in many cases. Not all consoles will have assigned switches like the Soundtracks Topaz does, and in that case, these channels will probably be permanently routed to the main left-right mix. However, many, especially recording consoles, and many sound reinforcement consoles are going to have these assigned switches for the channels. So once that tape return or the output of your audio interface is coming through the channel, you've got to send it somewhere by assigning it to the left-right mix or to a pair of subgroups or just one subgroup by panning. For more clarification on this, I have a whole series of videos on the Soundtracks Topaz which is a relatively standard inline recording console. So there's a lot more information there if you want to go check out those videos. If you want to combine multiple things to control the level of a group of instruments, we'll use these four faders for an example. We'll assign all of these to subgroups one and two, which are right here. Then we can pan those channels within subgroup one and two, left and right, preserving that stereo image here. Once we have the signals combined to the subgroup, we don't want them also being sent to the left-right mix unless we're doing parallel compression or something like that. Again, check out the video on parallel compression with the Soundtracks Topaz. But we do want to assign these subgroups to the left-right mix. And to keep them the same, the left subgroup 1 goes to the left side of the left-right mix, subgroup 2 to the right side. If you wanted to send one subgroup in mono to both sides, you would combine them like this. Pan all of the things that you have sent to the subgroups, pan all of them to one side. Now we just have subgroup number one with the combination of these channels. And instead of assigning this to the left and this to the right, we would assign this subgroup to both sides of the left-right mix.
in every single way. Remember a time we waited around, always knocks us down like a tidal wave.
Mixing through an analog console is a lot of fun and it's a lot more hands-on. I find it to be a lot less fiddly. I'm not having to dive through menus and find certain functions. All of my EQs work the same way instead of having five or six different plugins I have to wrap my head around. So I find it to be a really good and a more relaxing, less stressful way to mix. Unless the clients you work with want recalls all the time, there are still ways around that to get things recalled. Everybody's got a camera in their pocket. Take a picture of your EQ settings, your fader settings, and all your settings on your console and outboard gear so you can recall that later. But if you're just mixing for yourself or as a hobby, this is a great way to do it because it won't stress you out as bad and you don't have to upgrade the EQs on your console all the time when there's an OS upgrade or a driver update or something because the analog console is always going to work the same way. So in my opinion, for a lot of us out there that want to do it this way, it's a great way to work and totally worth the investment in time to learn it and money. Analog mixing in general is a great way to work. It's less stressful and somewhat less time consuming. I find that my mixes come together a lot faster on an analog console than they do in the box. Whether that's workflow related or sound quality related, I am not sure of that. You can let me know what you think in the comments. Well, I hope you found this video entertaining and at least somewhat educational. Make sure to check out the links in the video description. I'll have links to some of the original mixing videos that some of the examples in this video came from, as well as other links that help support this channel. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Twin Creek Audio YouTube channel if you have not done so already. Hope all of you out there have an excellent and wonderful day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond. Whatever it is you're having, especially a new year, have a good one. And thanks so much for watching.